Welcome back to the race shop. Hey, thanks for joining me this evening. Uh, I'm in the, the international studios for the Cool Kids Club podcast, which is kind of a joke. It's just me and Sean in a couple chairs here. But um, we've begun this, and I appreciate you all watching. The comments that I've received are just awesome. We put a lot into it because we care that you guys want uh, have something that you want to watch. This matters to us a lot. So thank you for your kindness. Coming to you today from this international studio, but I'm by myself right now. I don't have any funny guests or guests with awesome stories today because this is not a little different topic. I've never made a video quite like this, so I'm kind of risking here, but it, it touched me and I hope that if, if you share any of my values that maybe it'll mean something to you too. Let me explain. Here's the deal. I got a kind of a troubling text from my driver today, from Trevor, and, and we're great friends, but he sent me this text and it kind of bothered me. Let me read it to you and you'll know why. I'm going to put my old guy glasses on. Hang on. So he sent me this uh, late this morning, said, uh, Trevor says, I have a young man, late teens, who's a junior dragster driver that I met in Bakersfield last weekend. Um, I think that Trevor was driving. I could be wrong on that, but he does drive a, a little altered there quite frequently. Nonetheless, uh, Trevor and this young man were in Bakersfield. Trevor continues, his mom said he worked with, and I'm going to delete the name, a pro team, a big show team, uh, not one of the top 10 contenders, but a big show team program. Anyway, so the, the kid was working with his pro team, and the, the story goes, and he, the owner, was so mean to this young man and belittling to him. The mother said that she almost went over to him and punched him out. Thought, wow, that's bad. That's a bad sign. I've had a lot of challenges, but I've never had that one from any, any crew person's mother. Uh, anyway, so Trevor goes on to say, the more she spoke, the mother, the more emotional she got. And she said that he just wanted to clean stuff and learn, and the owner expected him to change the heads almost. So the owner seemed to expect way more out of him than, than the young man was capable of because he was brand new. The mother continued, and she said, um, um, asked Trevor if we, after hearing we were going to have our hot rod in Vegas. So she asked, are you guys going to be, in, if you're going to be in Vegas, can you use uh, my son to help you guys in any way? And so Trevor said, sure. Um, and so Trevor continues, says he has his own way into the race and rides to and from. So just stuff that we won't have to contend with and that they're happy to be helpful in any way possible. Um, so Trevor concludes with, I didn't think you'd have an issue with it. Just wanted to make sure that you were aware that he'll be there. So that's the text I got. And that bothered me. I'll tell you why. Um, it bothered me that the industry, the drag racing industry that I've poured a lot into to, to be a part of and to, to be professional uh, bothers me that there's folks out there that apparently I wasn't there. I don't have video proof of what happened. That's why I'm not listing the name, but I do know what happened to the young man and, and he and his mother were devastated and that should not happen. So I want to speak to that a little bit. I'm thrilled that Trevor would, would be approachable and that the, the kid and the mom could talk to him. I think it's awesome because he represents our sport. He represents himself and he represents me very well, and I appreciate that. Um, let me share a couple of things. I got to tell you this story for the next story to make sense. Um, I've had this A fuel car for over 20 years now, and I, for some reason, I've always had this passion to use this fairly unique gift, meaning there's just not a million A fuel cars around, uh, but to use it not only to try to turn wind lights on and try to go as fast as we can, but it needs to be fun, or why are we doing it? Why are we spending the money? And I wanted, I just had this pull. Sorry to be the pinhead emotional guy here, but I just had this pull in my heart that I was a little kid and was at Balboa Drag Strip in the late 60s and early 70s, and I was that little kid who wanted to be a part. My dad had a drag strip. That's why we were there. We were way down the food chain. Nonetheless, I got to help this uh, fuel funny car guy. I wish I could tell you who it was. I don't remember, but I remember specifically that he let me help him mix the nitro. But I distinctly remember that there were, when they ran the fuel cars there, and, and we had Top Fuel and Funny Car back in the day, and I remember there was a driver who let me, I don't know why, I was the pathetic looking little kid at the time, but he let me come and help him mix fuel. Now, they didn't have the Anton Parr uh, gauges then, they were a million dollars and hopefully accurate. It was just old school with a hydrometer in a, uh, a big glass cylinder, and you see where the meniscus is, if you don't know what that is, that's part of the curve of the, of the liquid the way it is. But I remember him letting me help him. Now, to be honest with you, I don't think I was probably any help. I was just a darn little kid. I didn't know my back end from a hot rock. You think I'm bad now. I was really bad then. Um, but, but the point is he made a 
big impression in my life that, oh my God, this is so cool. I want, I want to do this stuff. And now, you know, a bunch of years later, I'm old and I'm doing it and been doing it for a while. Um, so that made a big impression on me. Trevor told, told the story in his podcast, the first one we did, of things that he got to do as a kid in racing because of his father running that made a huge impression on him. Therefore, when we get together, we both have a real soft spot in our hearts and maybe heads too for uh, helping kids out. So I can tell you a couple things. Let's talk about Trevor. Every time we have this car on display and it could be at a literal car show on display, it could be at a racetrack and we've already, we're already out and done for the weekend. And he will put in a gazillion little kids in that car, just like a darn uh, circus wheel, just over and over and over. And he's good with the car, doesn't hurt anything, but he has a passion to put kids in the car and let them see and feel. And there will be many that it's just another experience like going to the mall, but there's going to be a few that's going to make an impression on. And in 20 years, they're going to be out doing this stuff because Trevor put them in an A fuel car when they were a little kid. So it matters to Trevor and I never tell him no, I encourage him to do that. Um, and I'm proud that he does. On my side, um, I've had a motto for our racing team since the early days, as goofy as it may sound, but our motto is uh, uh, great times with good people at 270 miles an hour. It used to be 260 and then 250, but as I've made it over 270, uh, but it's, it's uh, great times with good people. And my point is I've always emphasized that I care more about the people who work on my car than just what they can do for me. I'm not implying perfection. I make all kinds of mistakes. I've offended people. I'm probably doing it now. But I can tell you, it's, that's not because my heart's in the wrong place. I make mistakes and can't walk on water any more than you all can. But I do care, and I do swing at the ball. So to that end, I can tell you that back when I first started this, there was a handicapped young man. And oh, my God. It was so sad because he was so terribly handicapped. He was in a wheelchair. and But his dad faithfully brought him out to the track, and we treated him like crew and did everything we could for him that his – limitations would allow him to to participate in and I, I had a picture of that in my trailer with a thank you note that hit him and his family sent me and it just tears me up to look at that like oh my god that's so cool that you could try to make a difference in someone's life because I'm telling you I'm doing this for way more I sell copiers to to make a living not because I'm in love with these dang copiers and we've got good ones but at the end of the day it's still a stinking copier who cares what I'm in this for is the relationships that I develop that's what matters to me well, in the racing, I'm no different. So we had that young man. Later on, a few years later, uh, I heard about this other young man who had been raised in, I'm not going to get all the details right, but the concept is true. He'd been raised in group homes and had a terribly challenging upbringing, and it wasn't his fault. Um, and I happened to know, coincidentally, I knew the gal that ran these homes. Well, we had my car on display out at the fairgrounds for a copier display 100 years ago, and she brought this group out from this group home, and one of the kids just went nuts, so showing an interest in the car. And so we talked and talked. I worked with this young lady to see, well, what would it take to get him to come out to the racetrack? I, I can get his hands dirty. He can participate. And, and I really wanted to do that. Um, so... She made arrangements, and the challenge was he had to be brought out by, by what they called his handlers. I don't know why he needed a dang handler. He was fine. There was no issues there. But I can tell you that it just chapped my backside vigorously that within 20 or 30 minutes of, of arriving, and this kid had been drooling, waiting for this for weeks for this to happen. But within 20 or 30 minutes of arriving, the handler is saying, come on, we got to go. I thought, what? Are you nuts? We haven't even started a car yet. Well, the handler didn't give a rat's ass about drag racing. He wanted out of there. Well, I pushed back. I said, respectfully, it's crap. We've been working on this for a long time. And look at that kid's face. He's crestfallen that you want to yard him out of here right now. So I pushed back. And the guy stayed for an hour or two, but it wasn't near what it should have been. But but we made some progress. After that, I took a um, uh, a picture, big picture of the car, a T-shirt, and it seemed like it was another item or two. It was a long time ago. But I took some stuff over to this this home where he was staying, and I didn't get to see him, but I dropped it off. Well, I know he got it, and I know that because that young man is no longer a young man. He's an adult, uh, married, and um, he still comes around here and thinks the world of Robbie and I, which, yeah, okay, that's foolish, but at least my part. But my point is I made a difference in that young man's life, and that matters to me because ultimately everything I've got here is going to burn, even my hot rod race car, but only what I can do that makes a difference in someone's life is what ultimately matters to me. Now, I love the race car. I love the nitro. I love what we do. Very passionate about that, but I care even more about people. 
So back to Trevor. So when Trevor sent me this note, man, my heart just sank. I thought, oh, my God, you know, we worked so hard to be good ambassadors of the sport. So to have a big show team, allegedly, I wasn't there, but to make such a horrible impression by being a poop head to this kid, I wasn't there, but it just broke my heart. And I thought, we can do better than that. And I want to leave a good impression in this young man's life about what drag racing is, about what, how the teams work, how the crew works, how it all works. So Trevor said, hey, I want to bring him to Vegas. Count me in. I'm all good. So we've been talking about some options, what we could do, but I'll get his hands dirty to the degree that he wants to help. I'll get his hands dirty. We'll get him a T-shirt, and we'll do some cool stuff with him. And uh, I think he'll remember that. And I think his mother's going to be proud that she tried one more time with another team because uh, I've not had a problem with this before. I think it's going to go great. I'm really excited about it. So the reason I'm making this video is this. It's not really for you all. It's for one kid. I'm making this video for one kid. Now, in this first text, I didn't know who it was. So I asked Trevor, I said, well, would you mind telling me his name? And he actually sent me the contact. But all that matters here is it's Anthony from Las Vegas. Anthony from Las Vegas. Buddy, I'm making this video for you to tell you I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to have you come help us in Las Vegas. We're going to have a darn good time. And I hope your mother's going to be out there too. And we'll show you around what we do. And we're intense. We work our buns off. We fly. We haul buns. But ultimately, I care more about you than what you can do to help me with my car. And I feel that way about all my crew. It matters. Um, so I'm really looking forward to meeting you and having you guys there. I, I trust it will be a real positive experience for you. And I can tell you that Trevor and I and my crew, who are good folks now, uh, we all feel the same way. So I'm honored to be able to meet you in Vegas. I hope you'll uh, watch this video and, and feel some sense of encouragement that, wow, not everybody's a bunch of poop heads in drag racing. Got one guy that gives a crap. That's me. I am the give a crap guy. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. So that's really it for today. I just want to share this story with you because it just touched me in a special way. Like, God, that's ridiculous. Why would somebody do that? So I want to try to make that good. Um, with all my warts, all my flaws, and there are more than anybody watching this, I'm sure. I, I'm not perfect. I make a lot of mistakes, but I do care about kids and that they're treated well and they have an opportunity to get into this sport at whatever level they want to. So anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and share this. It's, it really helps us, help us help you. Uh, quickly on the way out, I want to mention a couple things that if you ever are in the need for clean hands, please support the folks that support us. These, these uh, uh, scrubs in a bucket, if I get the name right, they're awesome, and we use them here. They're from Permatex. I like them because, I'll take the lid off, because they have a gritty stuff on them. And so when you're getting clutch stuff off, off your hands, that crap works. I like them a lot. So if you need to be able to wash your darn hands anyway in this matter, please buy those, and, and um, that would help us a lot. NGK Spark Plugs also helps us a lot. And if you need spark plugs, please use NGK. Support the folks that support us. It would mean a lot. I appreciate you all. You could be anywhere else but here right now watching this dang video. But you're here. And I appreciate you being here. If you are here, you too are a cool kid. Got my cool kid cup with my soda pop link. And I'll talk to you soon next time. We've got more videos coming shortly. I interrupted my schedule to put this in. I've got other videos about ready to post. So stay tuned. We will have more to share.